Hi, my name is Kaylee Silver Pena, and my final mini project is about how historical context helps us better understand the racism in mass incarceration. First, I think we should start with defining this. So Oxford Bibliographies defines mass incarceration as, and I quote, a phenomenon, the current American experiment in incarceration, which is defined by comparatively and historically extreme rates of imprisonment and by the concentration of imprisonment among young African-American men living in neighborhoods of concentrated disadvantage, end quote. You may have also heard of it as mass imprisonment, the prison boom, the carceral state, or hyper-incarceration. So now that you know the definition of mass incarceration, my thesis for this project is that with historical context about the loophole of the 13th Amendment and the Jim Crow laws, we can better understand why mass incarceration continues to exist today and why it directly and continuously targets African-American men today. The specific events that better help us understand why mass incarceration exists and why it directly targets black men are the loophole of the 13th Amendment and comparing the old and new Jim Crow laws. Because the ratification of the 13th Amendment happened after the Civil War, I wanted to give some background information about the Civil War before we dive in. In our lecture, A Composite Nation, Professor Hawk states that, and I quote, the freedom that the Southern states wanted was the freedom to continue to use slave labor to fuel the South's booming cotton industry, end quote. The South was very adamant about keeping slavery and backing the beliefs of white supremacy that supported slavery, but with the Civil War ending and the 13th Amendment being ratified, the Southern economy was basically left in tatters. So now that we have background information on the Civil War, we can move on to why the ratification of the 13th Amendment can be used to better understand the racism of mass incarceration. A loophole in this amendment caused the first mass incarceration boom. As said in the Netflix documentary, The 13th, and I quote, the 13th Amendment makes it unconstitutional for someone to be held as a slave, but there are some exceptions, including criminals, end quote. The loophole was that in the 13th Amendment, the criminals were able to be put to work without pay. So this loophole led to Southerners directly targeting and unfairly arresting several black men and women as the bias from slavery remained. And this was their way of making black men and women work with no pay. And this was basically giving the punishment of slavery for a crime. The 13th continues to state that, and I quote, if you have that embedded in the structure in the constitutional language, then it's there to be used as a tool for whichever purposes one wants to use it, end quote. Because white people had so much power in the government, they used this loophole as a tool for the purposes that they wanted to use it to place black southerners back into slavery. As racism remained prominent even after the ratification of the 13th Amendment, the Southerners wanted to implement a set of laws that would make racial segregation legal in the U.S. These were considered, quote, fair, end quote, by the government because everything was separate but equal when the quality was not actually equal. These set of laws were called the Jim Crow laws. And these laws were a barrier preventing black people from participating in various activities with white people. For example, black and white people had separate schools and separate voting booths. Often these voting booths were surrounded by white southerners threatening black people, scaring them away from voting at their ballot box, thus taking their voice away in elections. The Jim Crow laws can easily be compared to the mass incarceration of black men and women today. It's important for me to mention here that when convicted of a felony and after serving time in jail, many, many of one's rights get taken away, and this includes voting rights and obtaining certain types of employment. When taking away these rights, prisoners and former prisoners lose their right to voice their opinion and are economically behind others who do have the right to vote and who do have the ability to obtain the job that they desire. Los Angeles Times states that, and I quote, African Americans make up 6.5% of the American population, but 40.2% of the prison populace. While a white male has a 1 in 17 chance of ending up behind bars, for black males it is 1 in 3, end quote. Because the prison population is so unequal when comparing white men and black men and how the prisoners' rights get taken away after being convicted of a felon, mass incarceration is considered to be the new Jim Crow. From NPR's podcast episode, Legal Scholar Jim Crow Still Exists in America, it states that the author of The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness, legal scholar Michelle Alexander, writes that, and I quote, Although Jim Crow laws are now off the books, millions of blacks arrested for minor crimes remain marginalized and disenfranchised. 
trapped by a criminal justice system that has forever branded them as felons and denied them basic rights and opportunities that would allow them to become productive, law-abiding citizens, end quote. Jim Crow laws help us understand mass incarceration more as we have mentioned so many similarities between them. So in conclusion, through looking at the loophole of the 13th Amendment and comparing mass incarceration to the Jim Crow laws, we can better understand how mass incarceration continues to exist today and directly and negatively affects black men today. Here are my sources and thank you for listening.